This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Right, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at upgrading the hard disk drive inside this original Xbox which I keep wanting to call the Xbox One. Thank you very much Microsoft for confusing my already frankly uh, frazzled brain. So what we need to do today is we need to get the original hard disk drive out of here and we need to put a new one in. Now then, it isn't as simple as simply changing the hard disk drive if you're wanting to do this yourself. You are going to need a couple of things. You are either going to need a Xbox with a mod chip in there, so you can boot to an alternate BIOS which will support larger hard disks, or you will need, I believe, a TSOP flushed Xbox is just as good. Uh, if you've got a soft modded Xbox, I don't believe this is an option available to you, if I remember rightly. So. It's been a while since I've uh, dabbled in the Xbox scene, to be honest with you, but uh, there we go. So I'm just going to nudge this one back, and I'm going to show you what we're going to put in here today. Now, then this one today is here. Excuse me. If the audio does cut out at some point, or the video jump cuts, I do apologise. I, I don't know when this is going to go live, but at the time I'm recording this, I am full of lurgy. So, uh, yeah, you know, and coughing and spluttering and everything else. So if I sound a little bit weird, it's probably because I'm full of cold. So, uh, you know, this, this by the time you're seeing this, it will have been recorded, a, you know, a while ago. But So I should be over it. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I digress. So th this one here is a, uh, it's a Mac Store Diamond Max 16 160 gig ATA133 hard disk drive. Fantastic. So, back in the day with my original Xbox One, uh, Xbox One, bloody hell, my original Xbox, uh, I uh, I used to have an 80 gig drive in that, and it was absolutely brilliant. So, uh, this one has the original 8 gig disc in there, and it does work perfectly fine, or so it seems. Uh, the other one I've got, the little minter in the corner, uh, is... Uh, is also on the original 8 gig disc and that's still going strong too. So we're going to upgrade the disc in this one. This one of course is the one on the other video which should be uploaded by now uh, of actually fixing the RS13 and RS16 dashboards. So uh, yeah so we actually had those issues with the dashboard. The dashboard was come all missing or the C drive was come all missing uh, and we had no way to boot the machine. We had to pop a mod chip in there to get us into an alternate BIOS which skipped the clock check which allowed us to reboot the system uh, via a boot CD to then reformat the disk and restore everything. We put the original dashboard back on there and everything was running absolutely brilliantly. If you are really in the mood to sit and waste a good probably best part of a couple of hours watching that then great video is in the description below so otherwise if you just want to see us do this then that's absolutely fine so what I'll do is well I'll show you it working anyway so I've actually unplugged it because I didn't intend to do this but we'll, we will just show you that first of all there's no smoking mirrors this thing is working absolutely fine uh, okay, I believe takedown, burnout 3 takedown is still in the drive. Okay, so I'm going to overload the video uh, on top of this. Okay, so I'll just start it by ejecting the. Uh... Ah, there is no disk in it. Brilliant. So this is just going to start to the dashboard. And any second now, we should get the dashboard. Lovely. Okay, so there you go. So we have the clock. So it's going to ask us for the time and date. This is obviously where we came a cropper last time because oh, I haven't put the control. In either. This is where we came a cropper last time, of course, because the uh, what they call it, the dashboard was actually corrupt and consequently we had no way to set the time, which is what the M16 came from. Uh, so yes, so there we go. We're in dashboard, and as you can see, we're working fine. If we put a game disc in the so today we are using Burnout 3 Takedown. Okay. There it is, look. Lovely jubbly. Okay, so we pop that in there and we should see that this thing. 
we'll start. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. So lovely. So as you can see, this is a perfectly working machine. And we're good to go. So what we'll do is we will take the game disc out of here. Okay. Lovely. And as you can see, back in dashboard. So everything's working absolutely beautifully. Brilliant. So we'll power the machine off. We'll get this unplugged and we'll show you what you need to do. So we're going to unplug that. We're going to unplug the AV cable and the power cable. Okay, so this is the Xbox in question. In order to do this, you are going to need to do a few things. You are going to need a Torx bit. This one is a T15. You're also going to need something slightly smaller, like a T9. Okay, so that's the T15. The T15 is used for the larger outside case screws. So there's six in total on the bottom side. So if you've never opened one of these before, it's quite easy. There's essentially six screws. So if we take a look a little bit further up, bear with me a second. When I remember how the hell you adjust this tripod. Okay, there we go. So there are six outside screws, as you can see. So there are four rubber feet. So the rubber feet look like this, and the rubber feet sit in these holes, one, two, three, and four. They're essentially just double-sided tape, uh, which holds them on, so you can just get something, you know, like a small pair of tweezers or a little flat blade, slide it underneath the foot, and they just pop straight off. So that'll show you the one, two, three, four screws you need to remove. And then there's also two more screws hiding under this case sticker here, and one underneath this case sticker just here. So if you feel around this sort of area, you'll feel the depression where the screw hole is. Same here. Just pop a little hole in. That'll enable you to get your screwdriver into the holes and you'll just buzz them straight out. So the six screws there, those can be removed. So we move this back down. And then once you've got that out of the way, all you need to do is get hold of the two sides just here. And the thing should pop off. And there you go. So that's the top off. So as far as getting the actual hard disk out of here, it's not that difficult. It's fairly straightforward. So let's just show you. So over here, there is an IDE cable. So we just remove that from that clip. And then you just pull the IDE cable out. Okay, so that gets rid of that. You've then got this Molex connector in the back. Now, this can be a real pain in the backside because it's kind of in the corners and you can't get your fingers down behind it. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need a screwdriver or you're going to need something similar to that where you can just get behind it and provide enough leverage on the tabs, you see? So you can just get hold of it and just walk it out slowly. So you do need to be fairly careful with it, you don't want to go too hard and then you just run this back through here. Now it, this cable is clamped into here and they do tend to bunch together so you're going to have to walk it through the clasp one cable at a time. There are four of them and they don't always come quietly. Okay so that's three Red one. This is so difficult trying to do one-handed. Okay, so once you've got that, you are then going to need your T9 because in the middle there is that screw there. So it's not a security torx bit; it's just a standard T9. A T10 will probably fit. Uh, in fact, it could very well be a T10, but I use a T9 because it's what I've got to hand. I'll just pop you back down there for a second. Coming to think of it, I'm pretty sure that screw is actually a T10, if I remember rightly. But like I said, it's T9 to hand. Currently, there we go, comes out nice and easy. Alright, so now you've got that. Goes in there. So, all you do then is you just take the back of the caddy and wiggle it, and the thing should come free. Thankfully, that's as hard as it gets. And there you go. So that's the original hard disk. Take it out. 
The rest of the machine for now can go to one side. You don't need to do anything particularly fancy with it. Okay, that's it. That'll go down there. Lovely jubbly. So now you've got the hard disk carry out. There are two screws there, and there are two screws on the other side. So those need to be removed. And those are... my T15 bit is going in there as well, so I would say you can get your old T15. You can buzz them straight out. Okay, flip it around. Do the two on the other side. Oh, he would if I had my hand in the right place. Even. Lovely. Okay, so that should be that. So this should now lift free. And indeed it does, and that's the original drive. So in our case here, we have an old Seagate ST3100 14ACE. It is an old IDE hard disk. As you can see. Isn't it lovely? Manufactured by Seagate for OEM distribution. I don't you dare sell it. So, excuse me. So that's the IDE header. We have one, two, three, four. Those are the cable... Uh, select jumpers there and of course the Molex power so by default it's on those second two pins in from the left which makes this a uh, enable cable select so cable select enable so that's what we need to make sure our new drive is and if we come back to our Mac store okay so this is it here and we can see the cable select CS enabled is the same so second in from the left and it's currently on well, look at that, second in from the left, that's useful, isn't it? So, now then, here's the thing, right, because this is an ATA133 hard disk drive, as you can see there. Uh, the original hard disk, I do believe, is just an ATA100 drive. Let's just see if it says on here anywhere. Does it? Does it? Does it not? I don't think it does actually. But it's only got a 40 pin IDE cable in there. So, with this being an ATA133, uh, you can obviously use the, the default cable that came with it, as we're going to do for now. Uh, but, you know, it's an ATA133 disc. Put an 80 pin IDE cable in there if you can, and uh, I think it should run, you know, a little bit nicer, in theory. Um, so, yeah. That's what. Uh, what I will be doing at some point, but for now I haven't got one. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick the screws back in. So all it's a case of is taking the drive and making sure the screw holes, the screw holes line up. So you can see there, they pretty much do. We're just going to put, we're just going to put our screws back in. Oop, it'd help if we. Uh, okay. So we're just going to put our screws back in here. Do be careful if you've got something fairly powerful like this because the plastics on the case may very well have gone slightly brittle over time. Uh, and not only that, but these things are bloody powerful. So if it rips, if the uh, if the thread locks and you've got your hand on the edge of these, it will rip across your hand and it will hurt like hell. So do be careful you watch yourself okay so that's done that's changed over okay so a hard disk is in our caddy as we can see now our new drive lovely so we need to put this back in the xbox so let's bring the xbox back in Xbox back in there she is okay so first things first and I'm gonna try and get you a little bit closer just bear with me while I adjust you here because this you know be a little bit tricky so what you've got here is try and move you you can see where this cable is here so this is the 
Uh, a Molex connector for the hard disk drive power, right? So it's on this little bunch here, and it can be a real pain because not only have you got that, but also you've got the sort of like main ATA power connector there, the ATX power connector even, uh, just here, you see. So this all can get in the way when your chassis goes back in. Now your hard disk carry does have a little foot on it to the front just here in fact right so that has to go over this little black plastic locating one right so again it should it, it goes in easy enough but just be mindful because you can see how it's bunched up here it has a tendency to sort of want to wander over the locating pin which can then stop your hard disk carry from seating correctly so just be careful just to move that slightly out of the way when you seat your caddy okay so providing you do that it should be absolutely fine here so that's what we're going to do so I'm just going to make sure that that wire so we pull the Molex connect power connector out of the way we make sure those cables are clear of that mounting point and then all we do is we drop the caddy in as we removed it now as it goes back in we're going to bring this cable back around okay to where the slot is that it slides into right so the two are now fairly well lined up and this should all be well with a little bit of jiggery poker eh? sit back flat okay so now we're just going to run these cables and like we had to run them out one at a time you're likely going to have to run them back in one at a time as well I'll just pull them through the slot okay so once that you've pulled them through the slot there now you can see the sat back in this little recession we're just going to slide this back underneath the cable clips back out here okay so that's lovely so then what we're going to do is we're just going to push the Molex power connector back into place and believe me it goes back in a hell of a lot easier than it came out <sighs> thankfully All right. and then the ID connector just goes back in over the top okay that's lovely okay and then remember that clip there okay ID cable just goes under there so unfortunately this is still using the 40 pin ID cable that's standard fit with the Xbox uh, ideally with it being an ATA133 disc I'd rather run it with an 80 pin cable I know I've got one somewhere but I haven't got it to hand so unfortunately for now at least to get this thing up and running we're just going to keep it with the 40 pin IDE cable so once you've done that you can put your screw excuse me you can put your screw Remember though, you need your T10, or in my case T9, because it's close enough. Screw, sorry, back in the hole that we removed it from. And then your cable can go back under the clamp. And there we go. So everything's now sort of reassembled as it should be. Everyone's a winner. So now you can go ahead and put your case top back on. So if you haven't already installed your mod chip, uh, now would be a good time to do it. Uh, so you'll have to take the hard drive back out, get the motherboard out, install your chip, whichever chip you end up getting. These days, to be honest, the only ones I can tend to find are the Aladdin XT uh, 2 Pluses, uh, which seem to do a job, you know. It certainly got me out of a hole with Ever 16. So once you've uh, done that, you can flip your machine back over. If you are going to upgrade the cable, then upgrade it now would be my advice you know otherwise you're gonna have to do what I'm gonna have to do and you're gonna have to come back in so we're just gonna drop the screws back through the holes and at this point we're just gonna make sure that these oh, of course we're gonna remember to change our bit to the T15 and we are going to be careful because this is a an incredibly powerful drill screwdriver and it will quite happily strip and snap threads if we're not careful because they may be a little bit brittle over time but there we go so the six are back in and now we need the feet whatever I've done with the feet they're stuck to my stuck to my lid of my 
screw drive case. Okay. Lovely jubbly. Excellent. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so screw our feet are back on. So if you want to replace the uh, the adhesive underneath these, which is probably a good idea by now, it's probably got a little bit manky, it's probably disintegrated as you've taken the feet off, just use a little bit of double sided tape. Again, that's what I'll do once I've been in and fit the uh, the new IDE cable, but for now there's no point. So I'm just going to flip this back onto its right side. And there we are. So we'll plug it back in, ladies and gentlemen. So, go with power. We'll go with the AV cable. We'll go with the controller. And that's that. So, what we'll do now is we'll go back to the video capture setup. We'll put the uh, the machine on and uh, should be good. So, what, what you will need to do, if you haven't already at this point, is take a look in the description and get yourself this the Hexen 2017 boot CD. So once you've got your mod installed, of course if you've already got a CSOP flash or something like that, get this downloaded and uh, we'll go through the next step. Right, okay then, so we've now got our uh, Xbox hooked back up, so we've got the video capture running, so we'll start it up and show you what will happen normally. So if you just go for a standard boot, you will see that you are about to get a scary error. Error 16. Oh dear, what's ever 16? Well, ever 16 basically means that the machine cannot locate the dashboard or the dashboard is corrupt. Uh, so basically what you are going to have to do is reinstall all the dashboard and everything else. So that's why you need a chip, right? Because you need an ability to boot into a boot disk to actually reformat the disk and put everything back as it needs to go. So to do that, as we showed you in the last step, we had an XN70 2017 disk. Download that. Uh, the link is in the description, burn it to a DVD, pop it in your disk drive as I'm about to do with mine now, power the machine down, the tray will close of its own accord, okay. We're going to boot our console now to our modded BIOS, so this is to the Evo X BIOS, as you can see, this is with the chip enabled. So this will enable us to actually boot into the Hexen disk. Without the mod chip, without this uh, Evo X BIOS mode, you'll be buggered basically. So that's why you need the chip or the TSOP mod. Okay, so we've got that now. And as you can see, it says Unleash X has detected a new hard disk. Do you want to format your new drive? Press both triggers and the start button to continue. So that's what you're going to do. Both triggers and the start button together on the controller. There you go, it'll turn red if you do it all correctly. There we go, drive C, drive X. So, do you have drive F? Well, we need a drive F because that's where all our stuff's got to go. So, indeed, both triggers and start to format it. So, this is a completely blank disk, of course. This is. Uh, if you brought it in from an old an old Xbox, of course, and you've still got stuff on the F drive, then you'd, you'd skip that format. But this is a brand new disk to us, so we want to create the F drive, so yes, we want to format it. So now it's saying, Unleash Hex has finished preparing your new drive. Press both triggers and start to continue. There we go. I think my control is actually a little bit dodgy. Uh, I think one of, one of the buttons gets stuck every now and again. So, anyway, right, so once you're in, you're in, and you're back to this Hexen, uh, en Xbox engineering disk, okay? Excellent. So, as you can see there now, on the C drive, we have 499.91 megs free. On the E drive, we have the best part of 5 gigs free. And on the F drive, we have, well, best part of 123.5 gigs free on F, which is cool. So... That's, that's pretty much done. We, of course, we didn't elect to have a G drive, but if you do want a G drive, or you need one for whatever reason, then what you can do is, if you go down to TSOP Flash and Chipped Xbox Tools, and then down to, yeah, indeed, this, this controller is dicky as old hell, and what you can do is you can go down to the Chipped Flash Xbox Disk Upgrades, and you can come down here to where it says three point this control is doing my head in. You can go down to where it says new disc and then select whether you've got an NTSC or a PAL Xbox. So if you're unsure, have a look at your game discs 
And at the front, you've got the Xbox banner across the top with the big Xbox jewel in the top right corner. If it's live enabled, if it's a live enabled game, you'll have the live enabled banner underneath that. And then underneath that, in the top right hand corner of the actual sort of game art, will be a little box and it'll say either PAL or NTSC. Or if, if, if in doubt, even further still, on the spine of the game, i.e., the side of the case, where, you know, the box art is. Take a look down the bottom, there's a little box, it'll say the PAL of NTSC. As a general rule of thumb, if you are in Japan or the US, it's going to be NTSC. If you're in Europe, it's going to be PAL. Uh, if you're in Australia, I believe they use PAL as well. So, yeah, so that's that's a quick rule of thumb, okay? Select that, and it'll go through, and it'll walk you through reformatting. It'll also then go into XB Partitioner once it's complete, and in there you can mess about with your F and G partitions to whether you want to create them, you want to split them 50-50, what size you want them, where you want them, and, and everything else. So, if you do want a G partition, you know, you can create one through that, but by default, it's just going to stick you all on F, which is, to be honest, what I want, because I want as much space on there to back my game this up to as possible. So then I can be a lazy bones, and I have to get up and change a disc tile, which would be cool. And it also keeps my originals in nice condition in the corner. Jobs are good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come back out of this menu, and I'm going to kick this control up and down the floor a few times. So I'm going to shut down. Okay. I'm going to start up by ejecting the disc. So just started the machine by hitting eject. Whatever 13, it's missing the dashboard. Okay, so that's because we now have a nice hard disk drive in place. That hard disk drive is fitted. That hard disk drive is formatted. But guess what? There's nothing on the foot. Oh, there's nothing on that drive. So in order to do that, we're going to put Hexen in. We're going to start up with the chip enabled to the Evo X BIOS. That's going to boot our Hexen disk. While we're waiting for that, I'm going to kick my controls backside, smash my PA into the uh, to the triggers while we're waiting. I'm fairly sure it's the triggers that stick. So, okay, and then you'll get back to the Xbox, uh, the Hexen uh, engineering disc. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to clean my triggers off and this controller. It's not an original Xbox One, it's a Gamester pad I've had for years. And actually it worked absolutely fine, but obviously it's just been in a drawer for years until I dragged this thing out. And then obviously time hasn't been kind to it. Right, so let's see if it's any better. So let's go down to where it says TSOP flash chip Xbox tools. And now you're going to want to go down to where it says chipped flashed Xbox disc upgrades. So we're going to select New Disk PAL because we are in the UK. Right, and then you're going to be asked for a passcode. Okay, if I remember rightly, it's A, Y, B, X, and start. Indeed it is. So, use this option to build a new disk on a TSOP chipped Xbox. It also installs the Crazy NG 1.1.1 game saves to give you a backdoor in case your mod chip fails. Once XB Partitioner 1.3 launches, use it to format the F and G partitions, partitions 6 and 7. Press A to acknowledge. When XB Partitioner 1.3 loads, press back for help. Press A to cycle between the standard layouts, so F up to 137 gig with no G, all F, F up to 137 gig with the remainder in G, and F and G 50-50. Okay, so if you've got a really big hard disk, if you've got something like a uh, 250 or a 320 or a 500 or even bigger, I think you can fit up to a 2 terabyte. I think if you, uh, I think some people on the old uh, XBMC forums are running 2 terabyte disks. I can only presume that they're SATA, so they must be using some sort of SATA to IDE converter. Uh, but apparently those do still work as well. So either way, we're just going to go for uh, for a full uh, a full F. I think, because uh, that should be just about it. So we're going to go OK. 
Once you've selected your preferred layout in XB Partitioner, press Start to write the partition table to the disk, or press back twice to quit. So basically, it's just telling us a quick, you know, rundown of what we need to do. So again, we say yes to that by pressing A. Uh, again, a last warning that if you're using a soft modded Xbox, you are going to be bugging if you carry on with this. Again, we're just going to acknowledge that and say yes, and we're going to come back to the Unleash X stuff. So again, we're going to do what it asks. So it says, yeah, you've got a new hard drive. Do you want to format it? I'm going to say yeah. All data on non-removable disk will be lost. Are you sure? Yeah, both triggers and start again. So then it's going to go away and format your drives. Do you have drive F? Well, technically, yeah, we do, but it's blank. There's nothing on it, so we can just format it anyway. So, Unleash X has finished preparing your new drive. Both triggers and start to continue. There we go. And now, as you can see, everything's going to start copying down for us. So, Hexen basically has a nice clean cache on disk of all the nice, clean, latest updated files that our Xbox would be expecting to find on its C drive, including the latest dashboard update and everything else. So that's really lovely, that saves us a job. So this is going to copy everything it needs to the C drive, to the e-partition. It's going to leave us those little backdoor saves in there just in case something does go dreadfully wrong at some point in the future. And then it's going to leave us a nice big uh, F drive hopefully when it launches XP Partitioner and we can then get to uh, doing some nice things with it. So. It does take a while. This first little bit here, you can see, has been running for about 50 seconds now. The remaining is next to nothing, because it's nearly done. And you can see now, look, it's it started uh, yet another copy procedure. So it's got now going to the E drive, uh, where it's actually putting like some rescue tools and BIOSes and things like that that we might want to play about with onto the E drive, which is all nice. This does take a couple of minutes, as you can see there, it says remaining 1 minute and 43. It does take a couple of minutes to do, because there's quite a bit of stuff it copies down, but this is all useful stuff to have, just in the event uh, that, you know, something goes wrong. I think there's a couple of little tools and utilities it copies in there, which can, can be quite useful too, so... So we should be, uh, we should be alright to continue here. So we're just going to let it do. And then at some point, once we've got around the end of this, I'm going to have to go and I'm going to have to find my 80p 90 cable, wherever the hell it is. I oh, know I've got a bag full of them somewhere at home. But, uh, <laughs> eh, the things you never throw away. Uh, IDE cables have been sort of like, you know, redundant for probably the best part of 10 years. But, uh, I've still got a bag full of them. In fact, I'm sure some of them are still sealed in the packets. Because you could never have too many. But of course, it should enable the disk to run at its full ATA133 speed, which would be pretty cool. I'm fairly sure the chipset in the Xbox does support it, so at least I think it does. Back in the day, uh, the Xbox that I had was a launch unit, day one. Uh, that one was upgraded to an X3CE with an 80 gig uh, Diamond Max 133 hard disk in there. So again, same back store sort of Diamond Max disk also went in mine. And uh, yeah, that, that that ran beautifully. You know, upgraded that with an ID an HP 90 e cable. It was it was really cool. So as we can see, we're just installing some more bits and pieces. Copying some more bits and pieces like into the E drive. It's now unpacking everything on E. Xbox partition is just being installed on E. The user data now for the game saves, the backdoor game saves, just in case our chip goes crazy at some point now being installed and we're going to go into the X, excuse me, at which point then it's going to bring us XB partition at 1.3 and as you can see there, it automatically picks us 16k clusters, which is fine for a 160 gig disk. And okay, so let's have a look and see what it's going to suggest for us then. So we can see we have a 
partitions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 eight, uh, are all absolutely fine. Okay, so what we can do, remember, is if we say, uh, what was it now? A wasn't it, cycle through the options. So, you know, we can either have all the space on F, we can have. Uh, you know, the biggest part of F and a small G, we can split them down 50-50. Uh, I am going to go and just leave everything on F. I'm going to go for a full 145 gig F drive. Uh, so we can see at the bottom now, there's no free space of the available 156-ish gigs. So that should be cool. So let's uh, press start. So let's change partitions with formatted. Press Y to continue, or any other button. So we hit Y, and we can see now it's going to start partitioning everything. Okay. And that's that, it's done. So, uh, press start, right table format. So it's done that. So, I do believe you can press back twice uh, to quit. And this is now going to boot us back into Hexen. Yeah, definitely had sticky triggers on this controller, because since I put that IPA down there, uh, it's actually behaving itself quite nicely, because if I remember rightly, in the uh, in the original video we did where we actually sort of recovered the ever sixteen failure. Uh, if I remember rightly, we had some fun in XB partitioning with it getting to uh, actually press Y to format the partitions. It wouldn't do it. Uh, it just weren't interested. It just wasn't at all interested. <laughs> the little sod. So, uh, as you can see there now, uh, so the space is shrunk slightly, of course, because this is formatted. So it's a 160 gig disk, 156 ish gigs by the time you know we've applied a, a 1024 meg to a to a gig, uh, and then obviously by the time it's formatted, it shrinks again. So we've got an F drive there of 123 and a half gigs, roughly, with a roughly five, uh, four and a half gigs uh, E drive and a probably roughly 500 gig ish C drive. Uh, so we have no G, of course, we've no G drive at all. So that's all good and well, as you can see now, my controller is absolutely fine. So yeah, like I, said, like I was saying, I think on the original video where we fixed the M16 again, you know, if you want to see that, the video is down below. Uh, if I remember rightly, uh, yeah, we had some fun in XB partition to get the damn thing to. Uh, press Y to acknowledge it's probably because those triggers are sticking down at the same time I don't know, anyway so that's all good so we're going to eject Hexen we're going to eject the Hexen disk and we're going to go down to the reboot option and hopefully this time we're going to get dashboard no, we're not only ever 21 <laughs> ok so let's power off let's power back up Okay, so when the machine boots again, you're going to see something slightly scary. Error 5. Uh oh, what's error 5? Well, error 5, this is if your machine default boots with the chip disabled. So the Aladdin XT series actually, by default, with a quick press, will boot with the chip disabled. I, if you reboot the machine, it's going to be disabled. The only time the chip will boot when it's enabled is if you uh, long press the power button. Okay, so quick tap, boots by default. If you reboot the machine, it will boot disabled. So, you know, you're going to end up with Ever 05. What's Ever 05? Well, Ever 05 means the disk is not locked. The disk has to be locked for retail BIOSes and dashboards to load. Uh, basically, it does that to protect uh, the files that Microsoft put on there for the dashboard and things to make sure they've not been tampered with. So, if your hard disk drive is unlocked, which it will be by default now, uh, we need to relock it before anything else will work. So, in order to do that, you're going to put Hexen disk back in. If you've already taken it out, you're going to power the machine off. I'm going to power the machine back up. So this is with the Hexen disk now installed. Oh, bloody hell. We're going to have to boot it, sorry, with the chip enabled, remember? Nearly. Okay, so this is going to go back into Hexen.
So from here, we're going to go down to option number three, which is where we were before, T-Shop Flash Chip Xbox Tools. We're going to go down to the bottom, Disk Lock, Unlock and EEPROM Backup. So we're going to hit that. Use this to lock or unlock the disk on your T-Shop Chipped Xbox or to back up your EEPROM. So we're going to say OK. Do not use this on a soft modded Xbox, because a soft modded Xbox will not boot with an unlocked disk. Continue. Oh yeah. So we're going to let this do its thing. <coughs> Okay, so we can see that that uh, we have well the date and time is completely wrong, but never mind. So we can see that we have uh, an Evo Evolution X dashboard there that is booted from the disc. We have an Evo X M8 Plus uh, BIOS here, the kernel, or whatever. Uh, we can see the sizes of our hard disk uh, partitions down the left. We can see. Uh, temperatures down there on the right, which I presume is slightly wrong, uh, but never mind, eh? So we can lock disk by selecting A and highlighting the option. It will allow you to boot from your original Xbox BIOS. Continue, yes. It says done. So that's it. We're done. Uh, while we're there, we're going to back up the EEPROM. Just in case. So that's now backed up. So we can return to main menu. Because when we originally fixed this bloody Xbox, of course, some idiot didn't do that. And then nearly ended up making us brick it. So. It's always a good idea to make a backup of your EEPROM. Always a good idea. Because you never, ever know when the proverbial may hit the fan. So, we're just waiting now to come back to the main menu. So we will wait. We'll wait patiently. Okay, and we're back to Hexen. So we're going to do as we did before. We're going to remove the disk. Going to go down. We're going to reboot. Microsoft logo. Of course, this is with the chip disabled, and we're back into Dash. So if you do see the Ever 21 screen there when you reboot, and I always forget this, I, I, I always forget, because I always end up pressing bloody reboot, and it goes straight to Ever 21. <sighs> Basically, Ever 21 is a is a quite a strange one, really, but Ever 21 basically means that something somewhere on the system has told the machine to reboot. So it could be within an application, it could be because the dashboard is having issues or bits of it unsigned, and it's basically like a panic. It basically just, whoa, you know. Right? So it's just a flag that sets, so when it reboots, it just tells you the fact that something has rebooted it. It's really weird. But anyway, so if you see Ever 21, just power the machine off, power it back up. But as you can see now, a hard disk is locked and we can boot back into Dash. So we'll power it back off again for you. And just to prove it, you'll see that, you know, a quick press on the top left, there's no Evo X logo there. We get the flubber. Xbox, Microsoft logo will pop up. It'll go into Dash. There it is. Lovely. Okay, so we'll power it off. We'll do the long press. We get the Evo X logo this time, you see, because now the mod is enabled. And we should see that we will get our alternate dashboard. We'll get the Evo X dashboard. And we should also see. There we go, that we have a nice 123.5 gig F drive. So our 160 gig hard disk drive upgrade is in place, it's complete. Everything's locked. The machine, as far as it's concerned, is retail. So, you know, if you boot the the console with the 
chip disabled or the chip goes bad, you'll still be able to boot quite happily there uh, to the default dashboard because everything's in place. Nothing's come up. Don't worry about that. There's nothing sort of like untoward there, so don't be scared if you end up seeing error 5. It just means you need to lock your hard drive. If you see error 21, don't worry about it. It's just because probably, you know, uh, you've rebooted or you've elected to reboot the machine from somewhere within, you know, the... Uh, the unsigned applications that have been running whilst you've been in modern mode uh, so the machine basically just panics and you know, throws the error so don't worry about those two they're really nothing to be worried about uh, but generally speaking you know you're not going to see them it's just part of this process you may but don't panic if you do so as you can see there now we have everything up and running we have a nice 125 ish gigs of space on F. We can put plenty of stuff on there. We can reboot into our chip disabled mode back into the stock MS dashboard. We have this nice uh, XBM uh, Evolution X dashboard on our uh, modded party uh, on our modded partitions and everything else. So yeah, all good and well. Uh, let's just try game disk in here. Remember, we had burnout three earlier on. Let's try Burnout 3 again. So let's go to Launch DVD. Loading Burnout 3. There we go. Uh, the game's loading lovely. So, yeah, it must have been a bit of... Uh, must have been a bit of something in the disk spindle, maybe, stopping the... Uh, stopping the drive from loca uh, locating the disk properly. It's a bit of a weird one. But never mind, at least it's all back up and running and working again now. So, as you can see there, all good... Uh, and well, so we've got a nice Evo X dashboard on our modded partition. We have uh, a nice big F drive. We have the stock MS dashboard back on C. And now we've got a lock drive. We can boot the chip disabled. And everything just runs as though it was out of box in a stock state. Fantastic. So, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've found this video useful. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, please remember to comment, rate, and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, we've well over 70 videos on there now. Uh, most of it's games console related stuff. Uh, we do have... Uh, we're building up a little bit of a collection of uh, the original Xbox videos, to be honest. We've got a, f uh, a few on there now. And To be honest, it wasn't my intention to put a chip in... Uh, in one of these two Xboxes. It was only the case that I've had to do to get this one working again, which has meant I've, I've actually done it. Um, but now we have, there's quite a few cool things we can probably do with it. So uh, I think that's got to be uh, got to be something to, to look out for. So we may we may yet see yet more videos for the uh, for the original Xbox. I certainly want to reshell this one because, uh, as you probably saw, you know, there's a few marks and things on the chassis which is a real shame because it's a lovely bit of kit. Uh, the controller, well, now appears to be behaving itself now I've cleaned those triggers out. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, we'll probably get a few more of those. We've got a couple of little PS2s that I need to go through and look at, uh, you know, give them a service and make sure they're okay. Uh, similar sort of thing. Found being thrown out and just, you know. I'll have them. It's like, okay. So yeah, I mean they've been on on the on the desktop here for about eight months, if not a little bit longer. Uh, so I do still need to get around to doing those. Uh, so yeah, you know, we, it'd be quite nice to get a, a bit of the retro stuff in. Um, it really would. So yeah, looking forward to some of that. Uh, but yes, most of the videos are, to be honest, of uh, current gen stuff. So PS4. Uh, you know, Xbox One, things like that. Uh, there's a few uh, videos related to iPhone, MacBook, uh, there's General Electronics on there, there's a couple of videos, soldering techniques, all that sort of good stuff. So there's plenty on there to keep everybody entertained, hopefully. Uh, if you like this video, as I say, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, and like I say, if you want to subscribe, if you want to be alerted to the latest videos that when we bring them out, then if you look down the side of the subscribe button, there's a little bell icon there. If you click that, you basically you'll follow the channel. So whenever we upload something, you'll get a nice prompt on your phone or in your browser or you know, whatever else that you, you have your notifications on these days. Uh, and you'll you'll get the latest content as and when it gets put up. So, thanks for watching. Uh, as I say, my throat is now absolutely killing. Uh, but I will see you guys and girls on the next video. Uh, any questions, any comments? I, to be honest, I'm learning. It's, it's, it's all coming back to me. The more I do with these... Uh, original Xbox is the more sort of stuff starts flooding back that you start remembering. Uh, so you know, I may very well be able to help you out if you've got a tr if you've got issues. Uh, if you need a repair, uh, then feel free to hit us up 
uh, have a look at the description below. Uh, I, you know, PS3, Xbox, sorry, PS3, PS4, Xbox One, uh, obviously the original Xbox, the more retro stuff. Hit me up and I'll see what I can do for you. Uh, email address is down below. Uh, website is coming soon, not quite there yet. Uh, you know, but as always, if you're in the UK or the EU and you want to get repair, drop me a message and I'll see what I can do for you. So, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. You've been brilliant. I've been Andy Paul and I will see you shortly on the next one. So, for me, it's bye bye for now. Many thanks for watching then, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there, and there's lots more to come.